Hello there, welcome to another video. In this one, we are going to understand how exactly data is organized not only in Houdini but in almost any 3D package. To understand this particular concept, I am going to pick the example of how exactly shapes can be created. Now to create shapes in a three-dimensional space, the first thing we need to do is place 3D points in our coordinate system. And to place them, all we need to do is tell what is the x, y, and z coordinate values for every single point. Once we have placed these points, we just connect them with several edges. Once we have several edges which are forming a loop, a closed loop, we can create polygonal primitives which enclose them. This forms a surface which we are going to render out finally. Now, this particular face or primitive has different names. In Houdini, we usually call them primitives. In Maya, Max or other packages, it's usually called a face. Now, once we do the same operation several times over, we can create a big shape with several points with interconnected edges and several faces facing in different direction. Now, this particular shape is let's say of a spear and then I have a separate shape here or that of a cube. Now, if I want to work with these individually, then it would be easier if this was organized as a completely different object and this organized as a completely different object. So what we finally do is take the entire shape which we want and place that into a specific node called an object node. This allows us to position it, rotate it and scale it however we want. Once we have done any of these, or once we have even reached the stage of having faces on an object, we can go ahead and start shading and rendering the object itself. So let's go ahead into Houdini and actually see how this works. So now here within Houdini, let me start by creating a very simple polygonal grid object. And when I do, Houdini goes ahead and creates the object node for me in the scene view of the network view. The scene view is basically the most root level of my entire network view and just like in your Finder or Windows Explorer or any file browser, we can navigate around in here. So here we have the grid object, I can double click on it and it takes me inside the grid object where we can actually see the shape node itself. And here at the top you can see the navigation bar, we are gone from the object level, inside the geometry itself and here we are looking at the shapes. Once we are here at the shape level, we can go ahead and check all the different attributes associated with this shape by just middle clicking on this. As you can see, this shape has 100 points, 81 primitives, 324 vertices and 81 polygons and a lot of other details. Let me go ahead and create a couple of more objects to give you a better understanding. So here I've gone ahead and created all these additional objects. I'll just lay out them pressing the L key on the keyboard. Now, I have created these five objects in my Houdini scene. I want to go ahead and use an explorer-like window where I get to see a tree structure which shows me all of these different objects. To do that, I can go over to the tree view here on the top and here you can see that Houdini's root exists and all of the different contexts, the channel editor, compositing, modeling and everything exists. Here under modeling, which is a scene context, I have all of the different objects which I've just created available. And also I have the camera through which I'm looking at the scene. Now if I open up any one of these objects, you can see the actual shape nodes themselves. So it's a hierarchical arrangement of each and every single node that exists in Houdini itself. Now, let's understand a couple of more things about working with this hierarchy before we go ahead. Here, I am within the box object, which is here. Now, let's say I want to work only with this geometry and I don't want anything else in the scene visible at this particular time. So, here at the top, in my particular scene view, I can click and tell whether if I want to ghost other objects or hide other objects. Ghost other objects is the default which is why all of the other objects are grayed out for now. I can tell hide other objects which literally hides all of the objects in my scene. If I tell show all objects, they look like as if they belong in the same object itself which might be a little confusing. So I'll select ghost other objects itself. Now, apart from that, if I let's say try to create this platonic solid right here when I'm in the box uh, inside the geometry node itself, 
you can see that I get thrown out of the geometry node and then a new geometry node gets created with the platonic inside it which is not exactly what we might want all the time so let me delete this I'll go back into the box object and now if I want to create any particular shape but I want it in context within this particular geometry node itself I can go here to the top of my scene view click on this context option and tell instead of creating at the object level created at the context itself so now if I control click on this platonic object you can see my box object gets templated and the new platonic object gets created right here in the same geometry node itself so that's most of the basics of how exactly nodes are organized we have shape nodes which sit inside geometry nodes and then these geometry nodes can actually be packaged into their own networks so here you can see a simple network which is organized or also you can go ahead and select them all and create a sub network which is nothing but like a simple group out of these particular nodes so once you click on them you can see all of these geometries still exist inside them and going back to my tree view you should be able to see the same thing again I have a subnet with all of these objects inside it so pretty much that's it for how nodes are organized I'll concentrated only on shape nodes for now because that is what I'll be working with for next couple of videos you should be able to go through the help documentation and other resources online to get a better understanding on how exactly nodes are organized so that's it for this video I hope you guys found this video useful if you have any doubts critics comments or suggestions you can always put them down in the comment section sorry about the delays I'll be making more videos very soon now so I'll see you in the next one